Hey guys, welcome back to K Trails, the Lenry Kerman story, where straight away we're in with a bad idea. Uh, so I logged in and went to Lenry's ship and went, oh look, a keythane patch. And immediately set up myself a, a manoeuvre node to land down straight upon it. Organised my orientation and here you can see the stupid idea for um, taking shape. Uh, I am falling into the shadow of the moon and... For some reason, it's not even con crossed my mind that this would be a bad idea. And better than yet, better than that, I've not done any quick save. So from this point onwards, I am committed to landing on the dark side of the moon. But hey, whatever, you know, these things happen. So I'm burning through my uh, remaining sort of transfer fuel, if you will. I had a little little unit stuck on the back of the Keythane Hunter, uh, as you can just about make out there on the, on the, the rear, rear end. Thankfully, my lighting system uh, is very comprehensive, shall we say. There are a few dark spots on there, but all in all, I've actually done quite well at being able to light up the ship. Um, <clears throat> yes, indeed. So we're going to uh, bring this down... Uh, try and like negate this uh, what 346 meters per second orbital velocity which is steadily oh it's because I've run out of fuel I was gonna say steadily steadily um, increasing in, in velocity but there we go I've got my three main engines online now um, as you can tell by the blue line thankfully my little bit of debris is going to smash into the surface of the moon so we don't really have to worry about that but more on debris debris collection later um, I'm aiming for just any any of these these nice little little um, hexes here and hopefully gonna land down do some science get back up to the science depot and uh, hand over fuel and science is my major aim here so we're at 24 kilometers up and quite a way left to fall so I think what I'm gonna do is kind of blip it down to about I don't know seven kilometers something like that and at this point I'm starting to worry about how fast I'm dropping down so at 200 meters per second I'm like oh I could cover these seven kilometers quite quickly uh, I, I can't really think off the top of my head so it's uh, 200 is a kilometer in four seconds so uh, five seconds in fact so it's um, that uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. of course 35 seconds yeah right so um, I'm like okay well let's know know that out and then I'm like oh wait I've still got despite having like 35 seconds worth of drop at 200 meters per second if I bring it down to 10 meters per second that's a hell of a lot longer um, so uh, and for some reason I think no no you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna have a powered landing the whole way through this um, and Oh, it, it just takes forever. So I, I come into my IVA here to look at my ra radar um, altitude, that one right there, which tells me that I've got about a kilometre to go. So I'm like, all right, you know what, stuff this. I'm just going to uh, cut my engines and start plummeting. Uh, I didn't quite realise how accurate that radar alt altimeter is. Um, I kind of wish that I'd done the entire thing from this type of landing, um, this type of view for the landing. But as it happens, I, I felt more comfortable with the uh, external view and for some reason never really wanted to build up that much uh, velocity on my way down. So yeah, I, I just do a lot of putt-putting about. Um, I, I spent an awful lot of fuel keeping my speed at about two meters per second um, with like literally a kilometer to go. So th this will take a while. Uh, in fact, we're at 100 meters now. Uh, coming down slowly, slowly. I still can't see the floor. I'm hoping Lenry can. And there, there's some floor. So we'll just go with that. I'm like, okay, awesome. Job done. What do I do now? Oh, wait, of course. I put my power, uh, my solar panels out. But of course, there's no solar panel to absorb here. Um, so we're going to have to wait for daytime. And I also uh, pop out my drills just in case. Um, I, I don't know what they're going to do. Well, I, I know what they're going to do. They're going to eat through the entire electric charge that I've got left. But whilst we're doing that, let's grab some science because this is half of what Lenry's mission is. Um, I'm going to see if we can do as much science as possible with Lenry and then we can hopefully be able to get uh, extensions to his base and then eventually fly his base out to other areas and, and have this beautiful all singing, all dancing um, ship to go out and do everything. 
But um, until that point in time, it's all about Lenry just mucking around and doing what he can. So we pop out and have a bit of a, a bimble around, and I just decide to take a good look at the ship, um, see what's going on there. We got we got a couple of science pods. Uh, we've got the whole Keythane extraction and processing unit. Uh, obviously I can turn it into liquid fuel or indeed oxidizer. Um, and now I'm thinking, right, well I've got things to do with my other sh Oh, in fact, at this point in time I'm like, okay, how do I make uh, Sunrise as a uh, alarm? But I can't do that, so we'll, we'll skip on and to my next mission. Successful landing, yay. So here we have the combined uh, Better Science Depot and the Grasper 2. Uh, these two things here I would put in orbit last episode, if you remember correctly, with uh, Curza. And now we have a mission for them. So with a little bit of uh, fuel jiggery pokery and moving things around, finding out where all my, my fuels are actually located because last time I had a little bit of trouble doing that, I now try and find my, my next target. Um, just having a bit of a look around on the... Uh, what's it called? The, this, this map. To find out what would be the best target to move down. And of course, the best one would be the one in the orbit that is the same as us. The old science depot. Remember the one that I completely messed up and has got no robotic core on it to do anything with. And really needs to get out of space because it is nothing but dead weight. So with that in mind, I've set it as a target and I'm going to look up my manoeuvre nodes and stuff, trying to find the point where I am closest to having an encounter before I do the uh, undocking, <coughs> uh, which for some reason I'm deciding um, instead, of, uh, uh, instead of transferring fuel around, I want to uh, boost my, myself into a slightly different orbit. I, I misplaced, I mispressed the key, I pressed shift instead of alt. Um, I'm not sure why I did that, but here we go, a lot of monopropeller mono moving about. And at this point I realised that I have a bit of an issue. Upon the grasper I have placed uh, four 40 tanks, that's four tanks that I'll each hold 40 of monopropeller. Whereas on the science vessel I have only placed 200 volume tanks. Uh, now obviously this leads me with a little bit of a deficit when I completely move all my fuels across. So this is something that we're going to have to sort out in uh, another episode, probably the next one because I've been working on designs already, uh, none of them particularly what I would call sexy designs, so I'm, I'm going to have to sit down and come up with something a bit more, ooh, a, a, bit, a bit more street, well not even streamlined, a bit more bulky but a bit more uh, space age looking because at the moment I've just made kind of fat pencils and fat pencils whilst looking okay aren't looking amazing. Uh, so here we go, here is the issue, you'll watch this fuel tank right here, 10 short of being filled. It's a little, little bit galling um, and it also leaves me a little bit out of balance. Um, and also, more importantly, has taken me round to the other side of my orbit where I really didn't want to be. So we're going to have to wait for the next ascending node, or wait for the next node, or you know, e even close encounter. Um, I pop myself off a little bit, set out my target, and I'm like, right, okay, so what can we do here? And immediately start turning and smashing up all the ships around me because you know, collisions, collisions in space—they're they're good fun, right? Who <laughs> uh, who who needs to keep a safe zone around it? Ooh. Oh, that was that was a bit fast, even for me. So I align my ship up to the normal and and start boosting away, seeing if we can bring that uh, these nodes a little bit closer together, or in fact, as I am actually doing, bringing my orbit a little bit more coplanar with the old science depot. And now I have a lot of fun, just basically boosting prograde and retrograde, trying to bring my two uh, intersects as close together as possible. And indeed, at this very moment here. Boom, four kilometers was quite good there. I overshot a little bit, got to seven, down to four, up to five. We'll go around it for a little bit, but there we go. This ship is now on its way for a perfect little encounter with uh, the defunct science lab. So I turn myself around to, to, to at least look a little bit right uh, according to the, the camera. By right, I mean correct, not, not towards the, the, the opposite of left. Uh, add a manoeuvre, set up my set up my alarm clock and go right. Well, with that set up, let's boost my way round. Wee! Dark side, wee! <laughs> okay. The alarm clock tells me closest approach has been achieved. Look around, there it is. So, get to my targeting reticule, 
turn around and start nullifying my speed relative to it. Um, obviously I'm m moving towards it somehow. I don't know why I've decided at this point to slow my speed down when I should be actually speeding it up towards said target. But that's alright. We'll, we'll, we'll push around, we'll, we'll just glide it back and forth and we've got five kilometers to play with so... I don't know what, 10 meters per second gives me oh, a very long time before we catch up with it, so I'll time warp down. Uh, get into about 2-3 kilometers and do the same all over again. And I think we're going to do this all the way up until a couple of hundred meters. Of course, the whole time trying my best not to go careening towards it too quickly because the last thing I want to do is smack into a, another piece of space debris at something like, I don't know, 10 meters per second because that that would do all sorts of damage um, damage is not at all what we're after whilst we're in orbit so we're down to less than a kilometer and I think it's probably time to start using a bit of RCS to make my approach a little bit more accurate because as we all know RCS is the accurate fuel also the highly efficient fuel but the accurate fuel and your rocket propulsion is the fast fuel uh, by fast I mean we want drastic changes quickly we're coming in and uh, still time warping up because as it turns out less than a kilometer is actually still quite a distance to be doing when you're traveling maybe four meters per second you know four goes into a thousand quite a few times so there we go uh obligatory iva view um it also enables me to line up with the uh the the axis of the uh, piece of junk I suppose we'll call it. Um, it is literally just a piece of junk despite actually being you know a well aside from one critical function a fully functioning orbital science place and docking depot and fuel dump and this thing could have done so much could have done so incredibly well as my space station stand in. Oh that's very bright on the lights. I think we'll, we'll, we'll leave that off. So the time has rolled around to deploy the grasping arms. Now this is the first in orbit test. Uh, indeed, it's really the first test anywhere. I've not tried to grab anything with it. Uh, I'm not sure what my procedures are in place here. Uh, I know I really should be trying to grasp it as close to the center of, uh, center of mass as possible because that means that I can push along the center of mass. Just like putting your actual rockets on, if you get a little bit off, you end up speed, spinning round. Um, and that is something that's going to come back to haunt me. But first, we need to make uh, make my make my orientation perpendicular to the actual main body of this because that I can't grab it on the rear um, as much as I'd love to grab its rear. Um, so I'm just going to have to try and get it as as centralised as possible. And there we go. That's a, a fairly successful grasp apart from I now seem to be spinning quite a lot um, spinning is definitely a uh, a defining feature of what happens when you grasp things in space with infernal robotics I'm not sure what causes that exactly I, I know that I can counteract it just a little bit with my actual uh, RCS and be careful time warping when you uh, grasp onto things because there's no actual connection so you're so the the game doesn't know quite how to do it and you both follow your different orbits and it ends up dis uh, dislocating itself from you and and yeah it's all it's all a bit weird so at the moment I'm just trying to like shimmy my hands open or um, try and work my way up a little bit and also at the same time steady my rotation to to, to get back to something like controlled flight uh, and, and this actually goes on for a very long time. Um, I, I, it's it, it's quite difficult to maintain a uh, maintain a, a, an appropriate attitude and distance from from a vessel like this, and also control the robotics, and also make sure you're in line, and also point towards your retrograde. Um, but I, I'm kind of having fun whilst I'm doing it. Uh, it's very frustrating. But I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying myself and that, that's the main point of these things, right guys? Right? So cutting a uh, long and floundering story short, I eventually managed to get this. Uh, my nose is relatively pointed at the centre of mass, so I'm like, okay, this will do. Let's ease up throttle a little bit and try and deorbit this bad boy. Um, now obviously I've only got a, a relatively small bit of the, the arc of my orbit to, to, to actually get this down deorbiting it, else I'm going to be spending a lot more fuel slowing down and then speeding back up again. Um, and I wish I'd actually spent longer. 
Um, because at, at some point I'm like, right, let's throttle up a little bit, and I do throttle up, and then I find myself in this horrendous spin here, um, doing my best to try and control which direction I'm pointed at, um, and even occasionally pointing in the wrong direction, but, you know, that's all part of space, you find yourself pointing in the wrong direction, you put, turn your booster on, you're like, oh, no, no, just turn that off and turn around. Um, but yeah, and, and all in all, I'm just having a bit of a bad time. Now now I'm trying that ever so useful tactic of, um, well, let's let the spin happen and throttle up and down as I face in the right direction. And it's about here, I'm like, you know what, this just isn't gonna work. Let's time warp up, let that fly away a little bit. Um, and try and grab back upon said mass. Uh, I, I, I think I do a little bit better this time, um, despite having a, a rather, skewed view of the side of the pod there but you know that, that that's part and parcel of uh, getting into a bit of a spin with a bit of debris uh, i'm just glad that we can in fact actually time warp to nullify all sort of like weird angular momentums and stuff um, and quite happily get my ship back in line and start heading towards it. Uh, arms open wide, ready to hug the vessel. Uh, th I mean, this this is a friendly ship, really. It's one of the more friendly ships that I, I've, I've made. In fact, I think I may have to change its name from Grasper to Hugger. Uh, all it does is it walks up and it gives it a nice big cuddle. Of course, the following action of uh, throwing it away from itself at such a velocity that it then smashes into the face of the moon not quite so friendly oh wow look at that look at that kerbal rise there uh that that that's quite a nice little view there yeah but uh throws it away at such a velocity that it crashes into the moon it's just really not friendly it's more of an aggressive action one might say but he does it with cuddles and love so uh, i suppose that's all okay right surely <laughs> um so after all that um bullshit we get to coming up to try and uh, have another grasp at this thing. Now, I I'm feeling a little bit more confident uh, this time around. It's like, right, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to line myself up and, and, and get my get my ship pointing in the right direction. The important bit is having my nose at that pink dot. And then this happens. It's like, this isn't quite so useful. So I start playing around with my controls and trying to sort myself out. And we get back into another massive nose spin. But I do manage to grab it like this. And with the smallest, uh, smallest application of RCS fuel, I can relatively get my get my um, get my nose pointed in the right direction. At that point, an idea occurs. It's like, right, well, RCS is a, is able to control this, so why not use my RCS fuel to deorbit this thing? And and yes, it works incredibly well. Uh, I say incredibly well. I am having to fight it as well as move forwards. I can't just throw SAS on and, and let it go. Um, I, I think I've also tried um, putting a bit of, uh, what's it called, rocket fuel into it, uh, throttled up a little bit, but this actually slowed my rate of descent, well, slowed my rate of deorbiting. Um, I'm not sure why this is um, at all. I, I Yeah, it, it really confused me. Surely, like, one fuel plus another fuel equals twice as much. But no, they, they, they seem to interact in a bad way. So well, if you're trying to do this, turn, turn your... Uh, turn your rocket engines off and just do it entirely through RCS. So five kilometers down and I'm like, oh, I could leave it here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to make sure it crashes right into the ground instead of just like skimming and hoping that it hits a mountain. It, no, that would be fun. But yeah. Uh, so right, I'm like done. Let, let's separate cleanly and try and boost myself up to a nice fast orbit. Uh, I reset all my, all my arms and prepare prepare myself for boosting away and literally there we go small small putts and and off off to go uh join the, the the secondary science pod the second science pod not the secondary the primary one this is the secondary one uh and it seems to be the 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 tradition nowadays i I'm, I'm in a safe orbit with my manned ship so let's watch this crash in uh unfortunately once again because i've done all my orbital maneuvers on the day side this is smashing in on the night side. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, not too far away from, um, what's his face? Lenry, you know, the, the, the center of this entire mission. All right, yeah, so there we go. Boom, and I'm gonna jump cut to my other one because there's a lot of math mucking about now. So, with the missing mission, oh, 
So, with the mission successful, all that really needs to remain to be done is to get this vessel back to the actual working science hub, which uh, doesn't really take all that much to do. It's just um, a, a brief, brief orbit or two. Um, I believe I do it in in, in one orbit. Um, as well, I do this orbit. I point myself in the right direction. Uh, I wait for the marker. You see the red one at the bottom of the screen. I wait for that to roll round. Uh, wait till I'm just past it, in fact. And the moment that I get beyond it, I can start boosting forward and see where my my next orbit will bring me down. And once again, if I get it nice and precise, uh, I can get it within a couple of kilometres, which is really what we want. Seven's good enough for me. And once again, we'll just. Uh, fly around the orbit hopefully or I'm gonna look at my vessel and go oh look at that isn't that nice um, so there we go running around uh, trying to find identify any crash sites of course there won't be any um, also the flickering lights were annoying me so I got my solar panel out just to make sure that we had full charge and then turn the lights off because you know why why only solve a problem once Let, let's do it twice yeah mm -mm. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, this orbit is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. I really thought that I'd uh, boosted my way through, but there we go. There's a bit of time acceleration now, and we're just waiting for the closest approach so that I can start bringing myself in even closer. Um, I've noticed that I'm pointing in the, the the wrong direction. Well, rather, seven kilometers isn't good enough. Uh, we need to get much closer than that um, and as always I slightly overshot my correction burn and then have to correct it back to the other direction and then decide to overcompensate because you know what that's a long way to travel let's uh, push it up to something close to 100 meters per second because I like to travel fast in space when I've got an awful lot over half my fuel left um, all this fuel was meant to go into deorbiting the vessel obviously but that didn't happen okay so after a couple of overshoots and uh, eventually coming down to a reasonable speed to approach this vessel uh, I get within seven meters 17 meters and decide to change my control system because you know I'm not docking with my nose I'm docking with the control port underneath uh, I, I believe I also make some sort of attempt to make my vessels aligned uh, and then we begin the ever so graceful monopropellant uh, dance but of course at this point I'm like ah I seem to have very very little monopropellant left on board I should do this with as little thrust as possible uh, which unfortunately leads to a slightly uh, e uh, prolonged shall we say um, encounter with this vessel uh, there, there's my my orientation burn which obviously didn't throw off my my, my orientation in my, my my 3d spatial orientation at all I mean why why would that do anything to me uh, and try and bring myself up beyond the vessel so I can then move sideways and in with minimal of fuss but of course because I'm me I can't do it in just uh, one swift maneuver indeed I need to completely forget how to control my vessel and end up spinning it round and flipping myself away and knocking my arms into it and uh, it's all gone horribly wrong guys and I've got no fuel to get back and oh it all is lost thankfully I can make most of these orientation maneuvers without any RCS on board I just need to get my speed back under control take a breather be like oh god what have I done now uh, let, let's try and get back to how I was <laughs> perform a nice easy gentle gentle slowly approaching orbit uh, not orbit docking maneuver ah uh, see this this is why I can't I can't play this game because I don't even know like whatever I'm docking or whether I'm orbiting or you know whether I'm going for an encounter I, I just I think I'm doing one thing and I'm doing another and not to mention that these these docking ports don't want to fit They just want to rock and roll and, and go all the way around and there we go Yay, we did it mission successful We deorbited a bit of junk and 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 got back to base Kesler could go and do one. We're not having his syndrome around here But as you can see uh, the Keithane hunter is still very much in darkness So all that remains for me to say is Thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. If you've liked it, please be sure to like like it. And I will see you next time. Bye! Oh, that's my next target. <laughs>